A very good evening to all of you. In this video, we're going to be talking about dentin dysplasia. This is a micro teaching lecture where we will be doing the most high yield points in under 10 minutes. We will be covering all the syllabus pertaining to NEET MDS, INICET as well as INBDE. So before we get into the theory, let us discuss some MCQs which have appeared previously. The histological appearance of lava flowing around boulder suggests what? And the thistle tube appearance of pulp chamber is the feature of which of the following? So now that we have an idea of the questions, let's get into the theory. What is dentin dysplasia? Dentin dysplasia is a rare developmental disturbance of the shape of the teeth which is characterized by normal enamel, abnormal dentin and abnormal pulpal morphology. It is a rare autosomal dominant hereditary condition. Okay, so now coming to this. There are two points that you should note over here. Number one is, as the name suggests, it is a type of a dysplasia. Now, dysplasia, as you know, means abnormal. Abnormal dentin. So, here what you see is abnormal dentin, whereas the enamel is normal. So, here you have normal enamel. So in this diagram, we can see that the dentin is abnormal. It has completely obliterated the pulp chamber, whereas the enamel is normal. So because of this abnormal dentin, there is abnormal pulpal morphology. That means the pulp is either completely obliterated or it is just crescent shaped. The number two point you have to note is it is autosomal dominant. So it is a hereditary condition which is autosomal dominant. Okay, so what are the two points that we have studied here? Dentin dysplasia is a type of a condition which is autosomal dominant and it is characterized by abnormal dentin, normal enamel and abnormal pulpal morphology. Coming to the types given by Victop, there are two types which is radicular dentin dysplasia and coronal dentin dysplasia. So coming to radicular dentin dysplasia. So radicular dentin dysplasia, radicular means root whereas coronal means crown. So naturally radicular has a greater effect on the root. It is more common. There is premature exfoliation because of a shorter roux and radiographically what you see is a crescent shaped pulpal remnant okay so the dentin completely obliterates the pulp leaving only a crescent shaped pulp here you can see it's just a crescent shaped pulp apart from that histopathologically you see lava flowing around boulders so boulders means obstacles so and lava suggest dentin so dentin forming around boulders or denticles is called lava flowing around boulders which is characteristic of radicular dentin dysplasia. Coming to coronal dentin dysplasia, here the main feature is the radiographic appearance which is of a thistle tube. This is a thistle tube which has a funnel shaped end at one side. So this was the general overview of radicular versus coronal dentin dysplasia and these are the most high yield points for any exam now coming to the remaining points that are good to know let's start by talking about the uh, clinical features so in radicular dentin dysplasia both the dentitions are affected okay they appear normal or slightly amber in translucency however they have extreme mobility and exfoliate prematurely after minor trauma due to abnormally short roots. So because we have studied in radicular dentin dysplasia, there is a short root, right? there are shorter roots and it's completely obliterated by dentin. There is extreme mobility which leads to premature exfoliation. Whereas in coronal dentin dysplasia, both the dentitions are affected. The deciduous teeth, uh, like dentin uh, dentog dentinogenesis imperfecta, appear yellow, brown, or bluish gray, whereas the permanent teeth appear normal. So here you can see that the deciduous teeth they appear yellowish brown in color. 
the other things the very important things that you must know are the radiographic features so as we have discussed in radicular dentin dysplasia the roots are short blunt and conical they're short blunt and conical right in deciduous teeth the pulp chamber is completely obliterated whereas in permanent teeth there is a crescent shaped pulpal remnant so this is a crescent shape which is thicker in the center and thinner towards the periphery like that of a moon so this is the kind of a remnant that you see in coronal dentin dysplasia this obliteration occurs pre-eruptively apart from that you also see periapical radiolucency so surrounding the apex of the tooth you see periapical radiolucency whereas in coronal dentin dysplasia uh, again there is complete obliteration of the deciduous teeth which is not pre-eruptive whereas in permanent teeth you see a thistle tube appearance right so as we have previously discussed this is a thistle tube which is used in your chemistry labs which has a funnel at one end so this is how uh, it appears okay in the coronal portion the dentin is not com uh, completely obliterating the pulp it's leaving behind a thistle tube okay so a mnemonic here would be for the root you have crescent okay whereas for the crowns you have thistle okay so you have funnels for the crown and crescent for the root coming to the histological features the more important histological feature is seen in radicular dentin dysplasia which is lava flowing around boulders lava flowing around boulders means lava is indicative of dentin okay so lava is dentin and boulders are the obstacles or denticles so here what you see is uh, as you can see here lava is trying to flow uh, around the obstacles in the same way here the dentin is trying to form around the denticles which are the obstructions in coronal dentin dysplasia as well you do not see this but you again see a large number of pulp stone and denticles there is no treatment for this disease and the prognosis depends on the presence of periapical lesions requiring tooth extraction and exfoliation due to mobility so as we have discussed there is a periapical radiolucency in radicular dentin dysplasia uh, this can lead to poorer prognosis as well as uh, the short and blunt roots uh, lead to a premature exfoliation of the teeth coming to summarize it dentin dysplasia is a rare developmental disturbance which is characterized by normal enamel and defective dentin as the name suggests atypical dentin there is abnormal pulpal morphology in radicular dentin dysplasia it is more common there are short blunt roots which premature exfoliation and there is a crescent shaped pulpal remnant histopathologically there is lava flowing around boulders however in coronal dentin dysplasia the primary teeth appear yellowish brown there is a thistle tube appearance radiographically and histopathologically you see a large number of denticles coming back to our mcqs the histological appearance of lava flowing around boulders suggests which of the following so obviously the answer is cascades of dentin to form root right we have seen that dentin flows around the obstacles and hence this is the correct answer the second question is thistle tube appearance of pulp chamber is a feature of it's a feature of coronal dentin dysplasia right so in dentin dysplasia there were two types which was radicular and coronal in radicular we saw crescent shaped pulpal morphology and in coronal we saw thistle tube pulpal remnant so with this i conclude the video i thank you for watching and uh, for the notes you can go over to the link in the description thank you and have a good day